it's been well over three months now since I started using the DJI Pocket 2 Creator Combo as my main landscape photography vlogging camera system. So I thought it was about time I did a quick review, talk about the camera itself, about some of the things you might want to consider in terms of accessories if you decide this is something you want to go with. And I'll also talk about the settings that I've found seem to work best with this setup. I hope you'll enjoy the video. If you do and you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe before you go. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. This is the DJI Pocket 2. I bought this because I wanted a lightweight video solution when I made the decision to basically go lightweight on everything. So I stopped using my big DSLR and started using my little Canon M50, which was my previous video camera. Uh, I started using that as my main stills camera. I'll stick a link to the video where I talk about that up there now if you're interested in my reasons and rationale for that. For a little while I used my old GoPro Hero 5 Black, but that was proving to be a bit unreliable. So I decided to buy this, the DJI Pocket 2. Now I bought the Creator Combo. The Creator Combo is the Pocket 2 plus some accessories, and I'll go into that in a second. For people who are not familiar with the Pocket 2, it is basically a camera with its own gimbal. So if I move the handle around, you can see that the gimbal is working and that means I can keep you know, a nice level horizon when I'm shooting. It also means that I can uh, you know, smooth out some of the bumps and other bits and pieces that happens when I'm filming out in the field, particularly when I'm hand-holding. Uh, it has a fixed aperture lens, which is the equivalent, I think, of a 20 millimeter full frame lens. So reasonably wide, but not too wide. It has a small screen here, which obviously enables you to compose the shots. It also enables you to access a lot of the settings that you need, uh, particularly combined with the buttons and this little uh, joystick button combo, which fits on here as well. Now, as I said, I bought the Creator Combo, and that comes with a few extras compared to just buying the Pocket 2. It comes with a little magnetic wide-angle lens, which I must admit I haven't actually used because I actually quite like the field of view of the standard lens, but it's useful to have. It also comes with this, uh, they call it a do-it-all handle, now basically what this has is a little speaker built in, so if you want to listen to what you've recorded, you can do. But importantly, it's also got wireless connectivity in it, which enables me to use this, which also comes in the Creator Combo. It's a wireless microphone, and it also comes with a wind muff. And that's really useful because I clip that on, and I'm out and about shooting, and it means I can record video easily with audio directly onto the footage. It also comes with a little uh, mini tripod, which I'll show you in a minute. Now, when I first bought this, the first time I took it out, or the first couple of times I took it out, I basically just stuck it on auto everything and went out and played with it. And what I did find is in bright light, the auto exposure was a little bit uneven. Suddenly the image would get a little bit brighter or a little bit darker while I was filming. And I'm not sure if that is the auto exposure hunting or whether it was just that actually the exposure or the light was just so bright that the auto exposure couldn't cope with it, which is possible, particularly here where we get a lot of bright sunny days. Um, but since then I've gone over to pure uh, manual, so pro mode and manual exposure, uh, and that problem has gone away. I'll quickly talk about the settings that I use with this. I use, um, as I said, manual exposure. My videos that I export onto 
uh, YouTube are exported as HD 1080p and 25 frames per second. But I actually film in 2K and mostly in 50 frames per second, except for low light. If it's quite dark out, then I come down to 25 frames per second. I try to use what's called the 180 degree rule. Uh, and that means that uh, you, to try to get the most natural um, movement possible in the videos, um, at 50 frames per second, you shoot a, a shutter speed of 1 100th of a second. And at 25 frames per second, at 1 50th of a second shutter speed. And the reason that I use the lower frame rate, 25 frames per second when it's dark, is so that I can use the, uh, the longer shutter speed to let more light in. Now, because I'm fixing my uh, shutter speed and... Um, frame rate and because the aperture is fixed that means I have only the ISO to control my exposure so I increase the ISO when it's dark and reduce it when it's bright now obviously there comes a point when uh, I can't um, you know reduce the ISO anymore and it's getting too bright so that's why I have these let's open one and take one out these are little magnetic ND filters. So they just clip on like that and block the amount of light coming in, which means I can keep my one one hundredth of a thousand, one one hundredth of a second uh, shutter speed when I'm shooting. So why do I use those particular settings? Well, as I said, I output my videos in HD, 1080p and 25 frames per second. By shooting in 2K, I have the option to crop in a little bit while still keeping good quality for full HD. I can crop in just as normal, or I can do a zoom in for effect, or I can even do like a pan all in post and all keeping the quality of the video. The reason that I shoot at 50 frames per second most of the time is if I want to slow it down, if I want to get a nice little bit of slow-mo in there, 50 frames per second in a 25 frames per second timeline enables me to do that and keep the footage nice and smooth. The reason I use 25 or 50 frames per second is basically because it aligns with the electrical frequency here in Spain. So artificial lights like street lights don't flicker if I film them at 25 or 50 frames per second. I made the mistake on a couple of videos of accidentally shooting at 30 frames per second and the flicker was awful. Uh, and in fact, I threw away lots of footage that I couldn't use. In addition to um, the ND filters for this, the other thing that I think is important to have is a little tripod. And I've got this little one here that just screws in and I can then use it you know, out and about to uh, stand the camera on the ground or on a wall or on rocks or anything else that I've got um, basically so that I can set it up and shoot myself, shoot myself, that sounds terrible, <laughs> shoot video of myself at a bit of a distance. Uh, and that kind of tripod is good. As I said, this disc does come with a rather clever little mini tripod, but um, it is very small. I don't think it's overly suitable for outdoor use because, uh, because it's so small, it doesn't provide a lot of stability. So it's you know, outdoors on uneven terrain, it's very easy for the camera to fall over. But also I think there's a fundamental flaw with the design because the uh, the tripod opens, you know, as you open the legs up to turn it into a tripod by moving them anti-clockwise. But you screw the tripod on to the handle clockwise. So you screw it on and then try to open the, the legs up 
and you end up unscrewing it or you open the legs up and while you're screwing it on <laughs> you end up closing the legs down so it's fundamentally flawed design in my opinion it would be a very very clever design as a kind of tabletop tripod if it wasn't for that little mix up if they made it so that the legs opened clockwise I think it'd be very very clever but still I think you need something extra for outdoor work okay so what's my impressions on this um, I've actually been really impressed with it I think the video quality is very very good it's nice and clear and crisp uh, it's producing nice uh, nice tones which are you know realistic I'm not seeing that it's you know oversaturating or anything like that using it with the standard lens there's no barrel distortion or, or any other kind of distortion like you get with very wide angle lenses so I think it looks quite natural I've even been pretty surprised at just how good it is at low light I mean it's not fantastic but I wouldn't expect it to be this small there's a bit of noise and grain but if you're creative with low light video footage either by keeping it dark and contrasty or by adding artificial light in there in appropriate places then it's still very very usable even when it's pretty dark out so I've actually been really really surprised by it what about some you know potential downsides well I've mentioned the uh, the little mini tripod which isn't very good but that's neither here nor there the only other thing that's slightly frustrating on this is you are in the manual mode in pro mode in manual mode you can't actually adjust the exposure while you're filming so you can set the exposure start it filming but then if you want to adjust the exposure and you try to go in and do that it just gives you a warning saying don't operate this while the camera is recording so you have to stop the recording and change the exposure which means if I move from you know a, a, a dark or shadowy environment into a bright environment I can't easily compensate for that while I'm transitioning what I have to do is stop recording and change the exposure and start it again it's a minor inconvenience but it just needs to be thought about uh, while I'm out shooting and the other thing to mention is that of course this isn't waterproof it's not even designed to be weather sealed so you know out by the sea you've got to just be a little bit careful it's not going to get soaked and uh, likewise if you're out in you know howling rain you just got to be a bit careful I don't know how much water it would actually take before it damaged it but uh, just something to think about do I like it am I impressed with it would I recommend it yes yes and yes it's incredibly lightweight and tiny it is literally pocket sized uh, and that really suits me for what I'm trying to do in terms of my photography which is travel light be able to get to places without carrying lots and lots of gear and this really helps me to do that and I will say I have no affiliation with DJI I'm not being paid to do this video I didn't get this camera or any of the gear that I'm showing here for free actually with the exception of that little tripod which actually came with a <laughs> with a video light um, and I've got another little tripod that I now use on the video light um, but you know I'm not being paid for this this is a something that I bought because I thought it was going to be the right thing and I'm very very happy with it so if you're looking for a very lightweight easy to use video system which allows you to record the audio nicely it's got a gimbal so you can keep things nice and level and avoid too much shake I would say this one is definitely worth going for oh it does come also with a kind of a protective case thing that it fits into like that which helps to protect the gimbal and the lens and even the screen to some extent for storage the only problem with that is that the button to turn it on is just there so if you're not careful when you're putting it into the case you can press the button and turn it on and then of course you're draining the battery until it times out and turns itself off in terms of battery life pretty good um, what I tend to do because you can't take the batteries out of it what I tend to do is take a small uh, power pack you know just a USB power pack in my rucksack every time I go out just in case the batteries start to get a bit low on this 
um, but unless I'm out for a long trip doing lots of filming I never have to use it um, and for the wireless microphone I've never had to charge this on the go at all uh, I think you can probably get something like about four or five hours of constant use out of this and the camera you can probably get the best part of a couple of hours of recording out of this before you know before the battery is flat one other thing to mention on this is there is a phone app that goes with this you can connect the phone wirelessly and use the app wirelessly or you can take this little thing out here and put this in instead so you can actually plug the phone uh, directly onto the device I don't like using my phone with this while I'm out and about I find it cumbersome I'm much more likely to either drop my phone or drop this in the process you know I've normally got my hands full rushing around doing photography as well as shooting video um, and I find for the most part everything I want to do I can do by using the screen and these controls so that's it that's my review I hope you've enjoyed it if you have please give it a like share it on social media leave me a comment have you got one of these? Do you like it? Have you found some problems with it? If you've got some questions about it, again, let me know in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video and you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe before you go. And finally, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch, so thank you very much. And until the next video, bye.